Welcome back to RVGapier.com. Going to talk a little bit about um, solar boondocking, basically power usage. We boondocked well over 100 nights last year, probably upwards of 150 nights last year without shore power. And so we knew going in that we needed to upgrade our cheapo batteries that came with our RV. You can see we've got this pretty basic white box that I picked up on eBay for about $60 that's specifically designed to house two six volt golf cart batteries which is what we've got here we picked up the duracell ultras from batteries plus i totally expected to go in and buy the trojan batteries but ended up walking out with these because there was a little bit of cost savings actually a good bit of cost savings and these were rated almost as highly they probably won't last quite as long but for us last year especially every dollar counted so we went with these guys and have been very very pleased with their performance one biggest piece of advice I can give you is don't shortcut on the quality of your wiring so this is our jumper cable we originally had this thin little thing in here which is what actually came with the RV and as soon as I replaced it with this much heavier duty uh, I think this is for AWG Ames that we purchased from inverters plus we saw a huge jump in performance so don't shortcut that if you're not seeing performance you're expecting uh, check out your jumper cable um, so we've got them wired together you can see that we've got our fuse in here um, so we've got positive setup on this side and then obviously negative setup on this side and you can see that we put on we cut off the alligator clips and put on some um, terminal lugs there for the uh, solar power charging and so we've got male female connector here um, that actually runs out to our 100 watt panel um, let's see so yeah you can see how we've got things set up in here obviously we've got our Ames cabling here as well these are eight foot runs but you want to keep these as short as possible but that's what we needed to get the job done here um, we just used a ratchet strap over top uh, and underneath to keep everything in place as uh, a way to secure it and Roughly 30,000 miles later, it was no worse for the wear. We've got the Renogy sort of suitcase portable unit that we used a lot. Found this to be really useful because we could angle it and aim it, get it in the sun when we were in the, inside the trees, even if it was just for an hour or two. If we'd had a rooftop unit only, that wouldn't have really been possible. So been really pleased with that. It really got the job done. You can see the controller back there we're charging happily and so our cabling runs into our pass-through which we affectionately refer to as the basement you can see we basically just drilled a hole in a place that was convenient from underneath you can see our ground wire there and so we've wired it up to a Xantrex thousand watt pro watt sine wave um, and then we wired a residential receptacle that just runs through the pass-through and I'll show you where that comes out in just a second. And we use this one on a pretty regular basis too just from the outside to charge things or power things as needed. So we'll go inside. Oh, I will say this has a nice digital readout to tell you how your batteries are doing, uh, which is really nice. Tells you how much um, you're using it as well. So really helpful display. Let's go inside. So here we are inside and you can see that basically the wiring comes through just a small hole that I drilled on the back side of the pass through and then we just used some of that high to cable stuff that you can buy for I don't know five or ten dollars at Lowe's screwed to the wall and then we just snaked it through our cabinet here our TV cabinet and there's our remote control and you can see the lights on because we turned it on outside. We can turn it off and we can actually hear it beep and now it's off and we also ran the same wiring through this cabinet or wired them together as far as taping them together and snaking them together um, basically to uh, our outlet here so turned it back on and we're conveniently located right next to the TV so we can we could plug the TV in Turn the TV on and watch TV all day long, especially since we've got a nice sunny day. You can see I've got the uh, camera battery charger out. I've been charging the battery out here. And what was nice is that we had this 
um, counter space right next to that plug. So if we wanted to use a blend, small blender, uh, if we just wanted to leave things there charging, it worked out really well. So if you got any questions for me, you can email us uh, rvgapyear at gmail.com. Be happy to answer any questions. Uh, we used this a lot actually when we would boondock at Walmart or whatever. We'd pop into the store, grab a red box, put it in the DVD player, plug the TV in, and uh, watch our movie for an hour and a half, and then turn off the inverter when we needed to. So, hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, like I said, give us a shoot us an email. Uh, we're happy to help. RVGapier.com, RVGapier at gmail.com. Thanks. One thing I forgot to mention was that we are big fans of these Mohu antennas. This thing costs about $35, $40. You can skip the amplified version. Um, they pretty much can go anywhere or stick anywhere using Velcro. We just sort of prop it up in the window and we stow it when we need to stow it uh, when we travel. But great, great cheap antenna. Beats the pants off our roof mounted antenna that the unit came with and we essentially just had to buy a little bit of extension of cable. I did have to drill one extra hole right here to snake it through but um, huge, huge improvement as far as TV reception goes. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.